Hello and welcome to Gardening in 58 North. So in this video I'd like to give you guys an update on my pepper plant collection. So these ones at the front here, these are the ones that were in the previous video. These are now at least one or two years old, most of these plants. The, um, the sweet peppers, which are these two on the side, these are coming into their second season. The smaller patches are coming into the third season and this chili is coming into its fourth or fifth uh, season. I've also got lots of young seedlings that I'll show you in the minute which are just behind in the grow box. But these in the last video, I cut them back hard. They were suffering quite badly, in fact they'd lost pretty much all their leaves. The reason being it was cold and there's a lot of uh, aphid and thrip damage and they were just really not doing well with the dark winter months. So I cut them back to encourage strong growth and I put them all in the grow box, apart from this one because it had a few leaves and there was quite short of space in the grow box so I had to pick which ones went in and which ones didn't and as this one still had a few leaves on it, I left it outside the grow box in the conservatory. Now the growth has been good so far but we are just starting to get a few thrips and a few aphids starting to appear so I think the health might go down a little bit before I can get some beneficial insects to deal with the thrips. I could spray with pesticide but I prefer not to because I'm going to be eating peppers from these plants but also because I find if you spray with pesticides you have to keep spraying constantly because if you try and introduce beneficial insects later on in the year the pesticide will also kill them and um, the problem is constantly using pesticide is that the pests get resistant to it and eventually it doesn't work so I'm going to try and not use pesticide on these at all but the growth has been quite good on most of them this one because it wasn't in the, uh, in the grow box you can see the leaves are a lot lighter coloured also these are the old leaves so they're a bit damaged but there hasn't really been any new growth from this it's just been sitting there it's not really done anything out of the other plants um, the two patches are recovering this one not so well you can see it's only really growing from lower down there's quite a few uh, stems that look like they might be dead but it's, the new growth is healthy it's just a bit slow so we'll see how that does and uh, what we'll be doing with most of these plants is probably refreshing the soil so they can get a bit more vigorous growth, better soil conditions. It depends how they do. Uh, if they keep growing well, I'll keep the soil. It was only, it's only a year old and it was soil based and soil based compost tends to degrade slower than a pure organic mix. So I might keep them in the same soil. It just depends how well they grow. But most years I tend to replace the soil just to make sure they've got fresh growing substances to grow in. This patch is doing much better, you can see. Lots of healthy growth. There's also loads of flowers on it. What I'll probably do is I'll cut the flowers off before they actually start to um, set seed. Because I don't want any peppers forming on this yet. I want it to grow into a larger plant. This could start cropping in the next few months. Um, and I'd get a small crop of peppers. But it would stunt the growth of the plant. And I'd get a smaller yield towards the end of the year. Because it would be a smaller plant. So I don't want it to start growing too many peppers yet. Because it will just slow right down. So that one I'll, so for these I'll definitely be taking off the flowers. And then for the one at the, in the middle here, this was the uh, Piri Piri chili. That's probably done the best. This was the largest plant and it was the one that was the only real plant that had good leaves on it. The, um, the, uh, the two sweet peppers had leaves on them, but the way I cut them back, this one had no leaves left with a hard prune and that one only had a couple. This one had leaves on it, but the leaves were actually relatively healthy compared with the other plants. When I cut it back, there was no leaves left on it, but because it was in a much healthier state than the others, it's regrown quite well. And this one seems to do quite well as a perennial. It uh, depends on your pepper variety, some do better than others. This is a Piri Piri chili, it's not one of the very dwarf ones, and it seems to respond quite well to overwintering and coming back every year. So as I say, this is probably its fourth season, and it's coming back nice and strong now. Decent growth and the health, is, health of the leaves look quite nice, it's nice uh, dark green. I'll be leaving all these chilies out of the grow box now because I have lots of other plants needing the grow box and the light level is not too bad now in the conservatory. It's very beginning of March and around the 20th or the 21st of March we'll have the spring equinox when the days are longer than the nights and the light levels from then on will be actually not too bad at all, they'll be pretty good in here so I'm not too worried about having this under grow lamps. And the other pep uh, sweet pepper that I've got, this one here, it's regrowing quite nice. Really healthy looking dark leaves, uh, not put on a lot of stem growth yet, I suspect it's a bit weak because it was pruned back in the middle of winter. So I think it's just going to grow a few leaves, get a bit of, uh, get, build up some energy levels before it puts any strong growth on. But there's a little bit of stem growth, but just a tiny bit. There is even actually some flowers starting to appear, so I will actually also need to remove them before they set because I don't want this to grow peppers either. Being a sweet pepper, it's going to grow quite large peppers and I'll take a lot of energy out of it. And again, with the same with the, the Apaches, at this time of the year, I need to grow into a large plant. I don't need to start cropping already. It's just far too early and uh, it will stunt the growth for the rest of the year. 
So I'll now show you the young plants I've got going. These ones, I'd say I'm a bit concerned because they, they are starting to get aphids and thrips and there's not a huge amount I can do at the moment to control them. I could try neem oil or I could try soap sprays. I am using soap sprays and that's helping to an extent but it's hard to get every single bit of the plant covered with a soap spray and also soap spray doesn't always kill uh, the insects with one spray. You often have to repeatedly spray it to, uh, to kill them off. So this is my grow box set up at the moment. It's actually uh, my new grow box. It's much better growing conditions than my other one because it's got really high light levels. It's not very good for house plants because the light levels are actually too high. It's got a 500 watt uh, high pressure sodium lamp up there. So it's incredibly bright, which is perfect for things like peppers and tomatoes. But for house plants, it's too powerful. So I only really have plants that like a lot of light in here. So maybe cacti, succulents like that if, in the future. But for now, I'm using it for my pepper collection. So. There's a mixture in here. Most of these are probably going to be planted in my parents' polytunnel. I'll probably have one or two of these plants for my um, for my greenhouse, maybe conservatory, depends how much space I have. So I've set them into trays um, to try and organise them instead of individually labelling them because that would be a lot of labelling. So this whole tray here, which has got the most plants, this is a pepper called uh, a gypsy pepper. It's an F1 hybrid, so it should be a bit more vigorous than the ones I grew last year. Last year I grew Californian Wonder and I also grew King of the North. Both of them did quite well. Um, but I just wanted to try a different variety, see how it does. For me last year, King of the North did a bit better, I think, than the Californian Wonder. But that's because King of the North variety is specifically bred for places in, in the far north with cooler temperatures and lower light intensities. So that did quite well. The Californian uh, Wonder still also did quite well though, uh, just not quite as good as the King of the North. But uh, this certainly wouldn't grow outside, um, even King of the North wouldn't grow outside. But the Californian Wonder in, in the greenhouse and in the polytunnel, that extra heat, it did actually do okay, even though it wasn't particularly bred for our climate. But the F1 Gypsy will be interesting to see how they do. Um, they're supposed to be quite an early variety, so it should be quite good for our climate. They should crop, crop early. I need to get early cropping varieties because our season's quite short, and also with the cooler temperatures, the plants grow quite slow. So it's always earlier varieties I'm looking for when it comes to cropping things, uh, certainly when it comes to vegetables. So these are looking really good. Um, most of these peppers are sown about the same time, but the F1 Gypsy has really grown much faster than the rest. Plants are also looking really healthy, quite a good size. Uh, these were sown, according to my label, the 30th of uh, January. It's, so that's only about one month of growth, and when you consider there's about a week or so until this germinates above the soil, all the top growth has probably only been about three weeks. So I'm really happy with that, that's very rapid growth for them. So the other plant I'm growing is a few more Apaches, because I always like Apache chilies, they're really small. Uh, really spicy so you don't need many of them you can get a massive yield from a small space that's these four down here one of them doesn't look like it's going to germinate successfully it's kind, of, it's kind of been stuck in that stage for a long time now and it's not doing much other ones are looking fine the biggest one as you can see here it's coming up nice and you can really tell the apaches are a dwarf variety if you compare it with like the sweet peppers much smaller leaves even though they've got a similar number of leaves they're a lot smaller much smaller plants so I mean, i'm always expecting them to be a slower growth Although Apache uh, chilies do grow a bit slowly, you get such a high crop from such a small plant that they more than compensate for that. So there's a couple of other plants I'm growing. I still have some leftover seeds from the Piri Piri plant that I had that you, in, that you saw early in the video. That plant, the packet of seeds I used from that is about four or five years old now, so I thought I'd better use the seeds up. And that's these two plants down here. These are growing quite happily. Um, they're looking about similar to the Apache, just a little bit leggier because they are they're not a dwarf variety. So. They don't have very short growth. This tends to get quite big, almost as big as a sweet pepper. Um, but you can still see the leaves are a lot smaller than they would be on a sweet pepper. And then the final pepper I'm growing this year is a jalapeno. So I've been growing a lot of chilies recently that have really high uh, heat levels. And they're really good because you don't need many of them for a dish, just one or two chilies. And the whole dish is really spicy. But I want a bit more flavour for my chilies. The problem with the really spicy ones is because you can't use many of them, you're not really getting the huge amount of flavour from those chilies. So I want to go for much milder varieties. So I've gone for jalapenos because I like them. Uh, they've got really nice flavour. And you can actually eat them on their own if you want. If you, if you don't mind really spicy food, you can eat them um, on their own. You don't have to water them down or anything or mix them in with the sauce. It depends how, what your spice tolerance is. If you don't like spicy food, you certainly can't eat them on their own. But they are just, just I say, just mild enough for me to eat one or two on their own. But... Uh, these are the plants here. These should be quite heavy cropping. Uh, jalapenos are one of the heavier cropping chili plants. So it'll be interesting to see how the jalapenos do. And um, I've not grown them before, but they should have really good crop, uh, really good yields. And I've got several plants of them. 
So that's all the peppers I'm growing this year. Uh, I'd say most of them will probably be, uh, especially the, the sweet peppers in my parents' place, um, and a few chilies for myself and a few chilies for them. I'm also starting to grow my tomatoes. I, I might as well show them in this video as I have them here. These ones are a mixture of um, sun gold and honeycomb. These are a yellow to orange small cherry tomato, which is extremely sweet. And I personally think is the best uh, flavored tomatoes that I know of. Um, they have really heavy cropping as well. You get hundreds of uh, fruits per plant and you can get massive uh, bunches of fruit per truss. If I've got some photos, I'll put them up now so you can see how well they crop and how big they grow. They are big plants, they grow about two meters in height. So I've got a few of them and I've got lots of other tomato seeds on the go. Uh, the tomatoes are kind of sow a bit later on, normally the end of February because they like a bit more warmth than the peppers and also they grow quite fast so I don't need to get them such a big head start. But with the pepper plants, um, I really need to give them a good head start because they are a little bit slow growing. They can handle the cooler temperatures um, but they won't grow as fast with cooler temperatures. So ideally I would have them as hot as the, as the tomatoes but I know I can get away with cooler temperatures and they won't suffer. They won't. Whereas tomato plants, if they don't have high, high enough light levels or high enough temperatures they either get really leggy or they'll just get really weak and not do well. So I need them to have good growing conditions from the start. Peppers, it's not as important about temperatures so I can start them earlier in the year but the main reason it's early in the year is because they're slow growing. I have a short season here and I really need to get them to a good size before they're in the poi tunnel or greenhouse otherwise I'm not really going to get a good crop at all. These last year when I grew pepper, sweet peppers only grew about two foot in, in height. Maybe harvested about five or six peppers from each plant. With chili, chili peppers obviously a lot more, maybe a hundred per plant. But large bell peppers only about, probably only about five or six per plant. And that was getting them well ahead, a good head start. Whereas the tomatoes usually over two meters, some of them three meters. Others even pushing to four meters. We had to kind of curve them over the greenhouse to get them going and hundreds of fruits per plant. So I see how these do. I try and get them to get as big as possible. I started these in January, as I say, the end of January, to give them a good head start. So that's all for this update. I'll see you guys in a few months' time. By the next days, these will probably be going into the greenhouse or polytunnel. They'll definitely be in the next pot size, because these actually already need repotting. The ones at the back can, can stay in those smaller pots for a little longer. And when it comes to the other pepper plants, we'll just have to see how they do. They should hopefully be putting on some good growth. They might be ready for a change of soil, depends how, how strong the growth is. But my biggest concern with the other ones is pests and diseases. The aphids appearing and thrips, so that could be an issue going forwards. These ones are fine though, they're in the grow box, it's quite isolated. from. There's a, there's a hole here where the pests can get in, but there's no plants near that side, so it's very difficult for pests to get in. The only way they can get in really is through the ducting system. The duct uh, pulls air in and then flows it over the really hot grow lamp, so that should kill any thrips or aphids that try and come in. In any of the other holes, if it's during the day, the, the wind presser should blow the, the pests out because it's quite a high airflow going out of these all these gaps and holes. Night time there's a chance that aphids might crawl in or thrips, but it's quite difficult for them to get in. So generally any plants in here are currently absolutely pest and disease free. So I'm going to try and keep it like that. Hopefully when I get these in the polytunnel or greenhouse, they'll be pest free and they'll have a really good head start. So that's all for this video. And as I say, I'll see you guys in a few months time.